Hello everyone and welcome back to Creative Connect. This is episode two of season two and today's guest, I just want to say it's someone who the best way I can describe her is to say that she is confidently intellectual. <laughs> Definitely. So without any further ado, let us welcome Lisedi Matsunyani. Ferguson. Thank you. That Ooh. is correct. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for agreeing. Um, very excited. Very excited. Initially, you, I, I wanted you to be on season one, mm-hmm. but destiny had other. No, plans. I think the timing right now is quite yeah. perfect. Yeah. 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 And when we met last year, I could see you were busy. So now. Yeah, you caught us at a bad time. We were trying <laughs> to wrap everything up. Yeah. Like I think we were maybe a month into finishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was it was a little bit of chaos. Mm-hmm. You saw it just from that one day that yeah. you came. Yeah. Um, but I have the time now. I'm yeah. here and I'm happy. And we're happy that you're here. Thank you. And just starting on that. Um so how has life post shooting the Queen Bean? Quite quiet. Mm-hmm. Um it's been quite quiet. Um, th- at first, the the silence of it was very unnerving. Um, you know, kind of waking up in a bit of a panic, thinking that I'm late, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my god, oh oh, not. Don't need I'm to rush I'm not anymore. shooting. Mm. Hectic. Well, back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, as the time has gone on, you know, I've kind of gotten a bit of cabin fever Mm -hmm. um, where you kind of feel like you're not really being very productive, but I'm appreciating the rest that I'm getting. Mm Because I mean, it's the first time in a very long time that I've actually intentionally rested. I mean, the queen was on for about six and a half, almost seven years. Mm -hmm. And even before that, like I started working in production since 2015 and I haven't really had a break since then. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a lot for my body to unlearn as mm-hmm. well as my mind and mm-hmm. just kind of you know reassure my mind that babes you do need this rest mm. and it's fine. Um, finances might not necessarily agree, mm-hmm. but that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm I'm much more mentally prepared. I'm in a better space and mm-hmm. you know kind of ready to go. Yes, we can try again, but also I'm being very intentional about chasing my dreams more mm-hmm. so as a performer than as someone behind the scenes. On that, um, I was watching your interview, and where you said that which one? The one with Candice. Yes, yes, the five and a call. Yes, where you said shout out. Yes, <laughs> shout out. Where you said that yeah, no, now it's time to really reintroduce yourself. Yeah. as a performer. Yes. Yeah, and to anyone who hasn't seen you acting, what? How would you describe yourself as an actress? You know, the funny thing is, I'm sure people have seen me acting; they just don't know that it's me. I've been in a few things. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of them haven't really been long term. It's been like a few cameos here and there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been on Kings of Joburg. I've been on The Queen, uh, Igazi, Mm -hmm. Unmarried, the the, the last season, which was season three Mm -hmm. um, that aired last year. So you've you've seen me around. Mm -hmm. As a performer, I would describe myself as quite passionate, very linguistic, especially with my English. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my English surpasses all the other languages that I speak. I'm well aware of that. Um, <laughs> in in a in an industry where you know vernacular is seventy percent. Yeah. Could we change that, perhaps? I'm clambe, you know. <laughs> Nothing hectic. Some of us are trying. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm a very I'm a very passionate performer. Um, I realized much later on that I do have comedic timing, mm-hmm. which I think oh, I only realized because too many people started saying it and they were like, yo, dude, you actually funny. Mm-hmm. You have a knack for comedy. And I'm like, ha, huh. your Instagram really does say <laughs> very telling. If you think my Instagram says that you should look at my TikTok. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Mm-hmm. So apparently I'm, I'm quite the storyteller and I, I, in my head, I have my own stand up comedy special entitled, apparently I'm funny. Yeah. It, it will happen one of these days. But um, so, yeah, I'm very passionate. I'm very in the moment. Um, I think a lot. So a lot of the stuff, like I, I everything is pretty much internalized. Mm-hmm. I try not to be too big on camera because I know that there's a difference between stage and screen. Yes. Um, and I think I learned that from my mom in trying to be as natural as possible, no matter what character I portray. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just making her believable whoever she may be Mm. so i think that's the type of performer that i am yeah and i'm curious now with screen and stage which do you prefer 
Screen. I was, was I was born for screen. Mm. I love stage because stage gave me the discipline. So yes. I did stage quite a lot at school, mm-hmm. primary and high school. Um, by the time I got into AFTA, mm-hmm. so I graduated from AFTA. By the time I got there, in my second year, that's when they reintroduced stage acting. So I couldn't take it mm. as a discipline. So I just, you know, stuck with screen throughout the whole um, time of, you know, me studying. Mm-hmm. But screen is me. I am screen. Mm-hmm. It's been that way since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. But I, I cannot at any point deny the impact that stage has had on yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned your mom. We love your mom. Um, <laughs> and I can assume that you've always been in the public eye. Yes and no. So I was always in the public eye just based off what my mom does. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it came to like shoots or whatever, yeah, I would do them with her. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my mom started acting since before I was born. And literally a week after I was born, she was back at work. Yeah. And then generation started when I was about two. So I was mm-hmm. always on some kind of set. Mm-hmm. So I always looked at everything from the outside looking in. But mm-hmm. I learned the most during those times. Um, so in terms of me being in the public eye, it was it was quite minimal at the time, mm-hmm. I think. And now being a mom, I realize why. My mom wanted me to have as normal a childhood as I could. Yeah. Which is why I didn't really do much if any acting when Mm -hmm. i was a child Mm -hmm. and even in my high school career i didn't really act so she's like yo if you're really serious about this acting thing rather learn everything that you can now yeah um and then maybe when you're in university you know and you're kind of lot a little bit more mature and you can kind of handle those decisions then you know and, and handle the balance of it then you can fully pursue it so i i i was when necessary Mm -hmm. but a lot of the time it was just me it was my schooling had a normal family life um much to everyone's yeah i I had a very normal family life much Mm -hmm. to everyone's surprise i mean when mom got home from work she was still mom yeah it's only when she was on set that she was another character Mm. or she was you know uh the actress so the the, yeah the icon (laughs) icon (laughs) (laughs) and then with being being able to maintain a private life and still being able to be someone in the public eye how is the what's the balance to remaining authentic learning that you control what everyone sees Mm. um is that a good thing it's 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 a it's a Mm catch-22 because in curating i guess like a um an image or a brand that is still quite low-key and people just really know you more for your craft you also are at risk of losing the human side of you yeah so what i've done um especially with a lot of my social media i mean let's take my instagram for example yeah you see quite a few curated images or at least they make sense or what events i'm doing and all those things but Mm -hmm. you still capture who i am as a person yeah and I think I was very intentional about that and not really take myself too seriously Mm -hmm. because I think then once that becomes too serious, people then start to lose engagement or relativity with you. So I like just making sure that people know that, look, yes, I do do this. I do perform. I am in the public eye, but I'm as human as the next person. Mm -hmm. I'm goofy as hell. Um, I... Now and again, have verbal diarrhea. I do not take myself seriously whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also just how people be a little bit more at ease when they see me. Um, I'm a little bit more accessible, I guess. Um, But not too accessible. Mm -hmm. So that they think that, you know, I can just be spoken to or just be approached in any type of way. Um, so it's, 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 it's a, it's, it's a constant thing. Like it's something that I'm still learning. And also as a mom, making sure that Ro isn't really as much in the public eye Mm -hmm. as well. I mean, Ro at some point was a whole meme. Yeah. He still has the nickname, the nation's meme. Yeah. But after those memes, like after a while, like his dad and I were like, "Mm, let's not post these memes anymore. The captions Mm -hmm. got weird and he's a child. Yeah. And trying to maintain that innocence and maintain that he must have a childhood Mm. is more important to me than anything that I'm doing. And have you ever regretted raising him in the public eye? I mean, I don't think I really had a choice, mm. so to speak. It came with the territory. It really came with the territory, mm. and it's how I was raised. So I know nothing else. Mm-hmm. 
But again, it's the thing of how much access do I allow mm-hmm. for people to have with me and to have with my family, be it my parents or be it my son. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, that's been very intentional. Yeah. Um, there's nothing else I really could or can do. Mm-hmm. Just try and you know do the best that I can. If people see us, then cool, people see us, that's mm-hmm. fine. But they're not going to know what he does every single day yeah. or all those things. Like Even when I go on live, they're like, yo, where's Ro? He's asleep like a child should be. Mm, mm, it is 10 o'clock at night. He's yes. asleep. Yeah. He has school tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. I am I am a mother and I'm a daughter and I'm Lissedi mm-hmm. before anything else, before I'm Sedi. Yeah. With two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and now, um, are there any advantages and disadvantages to having your family name in this industry specifically? I think there are more disadvantages than advantages. Okay. Um, more so just the pressure of it. I mean, I think we're all aware of what a Nepo baby is. Yeah. Um, am I a Nepo baby? Yeah, to some extent, I definitely am. But I think the difference between some Nepo babies and others is that you see the work ethic and you see the talent. Mm. And that's more what I'm trying to push than my name. Yeah. Um, but it obviously comes with the, the notion of needing to either be as successful or better mm-hmm. than than your 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 counterparts or you know my parents especially mm-hmm. um or they think it's a lot easier for me because to get of, into it yeah. because i'm there and it's just a matter of just asking or saying no you can put me in this yeah. no, no that's not how this works yeah it'll never be how it works if anything if i was to do that mm. i'd be more shunned for that and mm-hmm. i wouldn't want to be known as that person that who just got, got their career. Of, yeah. yeah, just because I asked for it and mm. be like, yo, I'm squeezing in. Mm. No, guys, <laughs> let me actually do the work because I love doing mm. the work. And last year when we met, you explained to me how you got started. So can you just... So I started from the bottom and now I'm here. Um, I started as a production runner, like mm. literally the bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. I was doing intern things. I was getting people coffee. I was driving to and from the office, printing call sheets, um, printing scripts, you know. um, I was literally like at the bottom, bottom, bottom where I was earning, I think, maybe a K a week. Yeah. Yeah, that's really how it was. Mm. Um, And then from there, that's when I started learning the business and learning the production side of things, um, where then I started learning how to do certain documents, certain templates. Mm -hmm. And from production runner, I then became a production coordinator, Mm -hmm. which was for Rockville 4 in 2016. And after Rockville 4, that's when we were in development for The Queen. Yeah. And while I was there, just before we started shooting, my production manager, who then became the showrunner at the time, um, realized I could speak production to actor. Mm. So if there's certain messages that you'd need the actor to know about, but also kind of, you know, making sure that production runs smoothly. Mm-hmm. They would send you. Yeah, then she she realized that I could kind of speak that language. And mm-hmm. then from production coordinator, I became cast coordinator. Yeah. So I'd liaise more with the cast, but I'd still keep doing production things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, it just became production coordinator, uh, cast coordinator, sorry, mm-hmm. up until I think... The end of five. Okay. Yeah. The end of five. Then I became casting director. Mm -hmm. Because I'd also help my dad a lot with the auditions. I'd read for people. But then I'd also help him with the decision making. And be like, yo, maybe try this person out. A, B, C. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, 90% of the time I got it right. I'm still human. There's sometimes we might have gotten it a little bit. So there was room to fail and learn from that absolutely i think there's room to fail and learn from any discipline really any department Mm -hmm. um so but i'm I'm very glad that i got that guidance from my parents on the job as well Mm -hmm. because i mean even when we were on set yeah they're my parents but they were my bosses yeah so i would treat them as my bosses they would treat me as an employee and Mm -hmm. then only then when we get home yeah then we could kind of be like you know family like but also you know that 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 balance was hard to uh, establish and then maintain at first. Like mm-hmm. after a while, I'm like, guys, when we're at home, can we just not talk about work, please? <laughs> <laughs> and who would bring it up more, you or them? They would. Mm. Like they would then call me and be like, yo, what happened on Saturday? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, I'm relaxing. Mm-mm. We've wrapped. Yeah. 
we've wrapped. Ask me tomorrow. Send me an email in the morning, <laughs> please. <laughs> no, because then I didn't want our lives to then just be fully about work. We already yeah. had so much work anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's a 12-hour day. From 6 to 6. Can 6 p.m. till 9 p.m. just be yeah. us debriefing, like having some dinner, mm-hmm. going to bed, and you know? family. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, but I think a, a lot of our family time then came from the holidays that we then take. Yes. And then that was pretty much the moment where we used to catch up mm-hmm. fully. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much how it was. Yeah. And your transition into motherhood, has that influenced your career choices in any way? Absolutely. I felt pregnant at a very interesting time in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I was 21. Mm-hmm. I was still finishing off shooting Soul City mm-hmm. as a supporting actress. I was in my last term. Mm. So like, you know, semester is two terms. Yeah. I was in my last term mm. of after. And then I was graduating yeah. when I felt pregnant. Yeah. So it, it just, <laughs> it was such a, a weird time in my life. Like everything was like starting up. Yeah. But I think everything was also just moving so fast that like my pregnancy was a blessing in disguise where it, everything just, it didn't even slow down. It just stopped. Like, mm-hmm. ah! And I was like, okay, I might need to rethink this properly and actually take a break and make sure that I'm doing it for the right reasons. Mm. Um, And then three months after I had my son, that's when I then went into production. And that's when I was a runner for Igazi season one. Um, And then that's when I was like, okay, yes, you want to perform, but learn the tricks of the trade in the industry because at the end of the day i am going to stop acting one day Mm. and i'm going to want to produce and create my own things Mm -hmm. you know and i want to be in a position where i'm knowledgeable about those things Mm -hmm. so no like i can't just act forever not in this industry you need some kind of passive income but also you need to have some kind of autonomy over your stories yeah um our industry is still very small Mm -hmm. Um, so I know there's not going to be work for me as an actress all the time. So I still want to be able to create a life for myself and create a career that not only feeds me, but also feeds my son. Yeah. You know, so it, it, the biggest thing I learned from it was that it's not just about me Mm -hmm. and it's also about whatever legacy I'd want to leave for my son. If he wants to get into it, Yeah. if he wants to be in this industry or just make sure that he's set up for, um, the rest of his life mm. in whichever way that I can do that, that I can facilitate that whilst also following my calling, mm-hmm. which is performance. And now, so, so you say you're going to transition. Would you be in script writing or directing or just be full on EP? Um, or everything? It could be everything. I mean, funny enough, in my first year at after I did do script writing. Mm-hmm. It's something I really do enjoy. The only problem is, is that I have a ADHD, so a lot of my <laughs> ideas are like alphabet soup. Yeah. It's very hard to put an idea down and mm-hmm. then just kind of commit to it. But yeah, like I'd want to definitely be EP. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Um, directing, I've been toying with the idea. I I'm not that. entirely sure. This like A few friends of mine have been like, yo, you'd actually make a great director. And mm. I'm like, huh. And what's crazy about that is that my biological father is a director. Yeah. Now, in yeah, he's a director. So also just kind of watching him work, and I'm like, could I see myself doing that? A part of me says yes, but a part of me is very scared because it's something I've never really invested in fully. Mm-hmm. So I think we'll see as time goes on, yeah, but definitely producing and EPing 100% and mm-hmm. coming up with these concepts and, you know, bringing them to life mm-hmm. 100%. Okay, cool. Mm. We're going to step away from the questions a bit. Okay. To play the game. Fill in the blanks. Okay. Um, nothing too hectic. It's just to get to know you a little bit better. All right. Yeah. My favorite song to sing in the shower is blank. America has a problem by Beyonce, but the Jilly from Philly remix. So it, it's a little bit more groovy, a little bit more mm-hmm. vibey, a little mm-hmm. sexy. You know, I love that. Oh! Are you a beehive? Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But not to the point, no, 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 but not to the point where I'm fighting Beyonce's battles for her. No, I'm sure she can fight her own body <laughs> battles. I'm not commenting bee stings. Um, no, 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 but I can appreciate her music. Yeah. I still feel like we need the visuals. I'll always feel that way. But yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm a mild beehive. I'm just chilling there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then my favorite childhood film or TV series to watch was blank. The Lion King. It's a staple in a black person's childhood. Favorite song? Uh, be prepared. I actually like the villain song. Yeah. 
I love Be Prepared. Uh, Lion That's King God's was one, right? Yes. Yeah. Lion King was very instrumental into me being the performer that I am today. Mm. Um, I did Lion King as a school play in grade one when I was at Houghton Primary mm-hmm. and I was Simba. So when I tell you that movie is stuck with me for life, it is stuck with me for life. I can recite everything off the top of my head. That movie is so integral to my love for acting. What did you think about the live action? Let's not talk about that. Why would you do that? <laughs> I didn't watch it because I have the fear. But just yeah. don't. I, yeah, yeah. Just don't. Okay, they, cool. they, they, they. <sighs> yeah, no. Okay. We move. <laughs> <laughs> if I were a superhero, blank would be my superpower. Telepathy. Why? I'm very interested in the human mind. Yeah. Um, I am an observer more than anything, but that also just comes with the, 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 the job that I do. Yeah. That being an actor, you have to be an observer of human mm-hmm. behavior mm-hmm. so that you know when it comes to like whatever character that you have, you're able to kind of play it a lot more authentically and yeah. not so caricature. Mm. So definitely telepathy. I love knowing what people are thinking. But I love being able to observe. Don't you think it'll be like too much just to hear everyone's thoughts? The good and the bad? I mean, that can be controlled, perhaps. I mean, yes, you'll hear quite a lot of voices, but I think the more that skill is honed, then the more you can kind of go, okay, let me zoom into this one. Mm -hmm. And then go, hmm, what are you thinking? Hmm." But also, I'm a little bit of a... I'm an ambivert, so I'm an introvert and an extrovert. So I don't go out that much, Mm -hmm. but when I do, I do always find myself kind of looking at people, seeing their behaviors. Mm -hmm. I'm great at reading the room as well mm-hmm. so it's just one of those where it's like let's let's make this more you know potent make it stronger so i think that would be my superpower i'd be professor x for sure do you have that a uh, thing where when you're out in public spaces and observing people you're like recording for when you have to play on a role absolutely like, oh, i remember this, this person absolutely this every That's single time yeah and now let's talk to you as an actress what do you always look forward to when taking on a new role the challenge of that character not being like me at all. Mm. Um, I think it's very safe when you kind of get a character that is somewhat like you. Yeah. Uh, where you have a lot of similarities because then you can kind of go, okay, now I can kind of fall back on this because I've experienced this. Yeah. But playing a character that is so far removed from you, I feel like that's when one really gets to play. Mm. Um, in the last role that I did, which was Mbali on The Queen, she was just such a bitch. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if I can say that. But she was terrible. Yeah. So apathy and snobbish, mm-hmm. entitled. No, she was terrible. Mm-hmm. I loved her. Yeah. I absolutely loved so her. So you enjoyed the process of creating that character. Yes, you absolutely. Know. Like from where they're from, who their parents are, what might have happened in their childhood, why they are the way they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and depending on how long that character gets to develop in a certain story, then you can kind of piece those puzzles together. That's yeah. what I really enjoy about it, yeah. And how do you know when you've done a good take and you're like, yeah, no, I <laughs> I did that? I don't think we ever fully know 100%. Mm-hmm. I feel like an actor's worst critic is themselves. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I mean, there are probably moments where I'm like, yes, I, 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 I put my heart into, into it. That. I think there's a difference between putting your heart into something mm-hmm. and just going, yes, I ate that. I know it's going to translate. Mm-hmm. I think the best performances always come from it being in the moment yeah. and you being in that moment as the character. I mm-hmm. think that's where the real authenticity lies. Um, so I can't really say for sure where I can go, yeah, I ate that. Mm-hmm. I think there'll always be a part of me that goes, I could have mm-hmm. maybe done this better. I could have tried it this way. I could have tried it that way. But... In the moment, that's what your choice was. Mm-hmm. And I'll always take full responsibility for that. And I'll be okay with whatever decision I've made. And if there is room for improvement, then I can always do that in the next job. With choice, um, does it always happen that, okay, when you're reading the script and you're preparing, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then when you're on set, it's just something um, completely different. And does yeah. that work most of the time? Yes and no. Mm. Um, a reason being what you're learning on script versus what happens when you are in front of the camera. Yeah. There's a lot of different factors. There's obviously the blocking, like mm. how you're moving. And then there's also the energies that you'll get from other actors and how what choices they have made in their performance. Yeah. You know, And you have to be able to 
kind of accommodate that energy yeah. and feed off of it so that you can then feed them that energy yeah. and then make the performance as real as mm-hmm. possible. So you can kind of prepare for your part and be like, okay, I could maybe say it like this, but once you actually do the rehearsal and stuff on set, mm-hmm. then you kind of go, okay, I can kind of feel where we're going with it. I can see what my goal is. I can see what the other actor's goal is. Mm-hmm. And then the magic mm-hmm. then starts happening from there. So you can only prepare as much as you can as your character, mm-hmm. but always leave room open for whatever could happen mm-hmm. in that space. Because once you're in that space, it's very different from what the script says. Yeah. Yeah. No, between language and the physicality of the character, what influences the other? Does language influence how you move as the character or does how you move influence how you speak? I think it's a, it's a seesaw of mm-hmm. both, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I'm to move a certain way, then obviously whatever physicality I have isn't going to change what my resonance and my registration is. Yeah. But it also could influence what my language is. And vice versa. Yeah. Whatever language I am, then I know my voice is either going to go like this or it's going to go like this. Mm. And if there's an accent, then, for example, if I'm to speak British, mm-hmm. did you see already how my posture changed? Yeah. You have to kind of do that, mm-hmm. you know? But, like, if I'm going to speak like an American like that, then, yeah. you know, it's a little bit more laid back. Mm-hmm. I'm chilling, you know, but everything just kind of goes down. So the I think with linguistics and also vocal registration, Mm -hmm. it then kind of changes how you breathe, how you sit or stand, Mm -hmm. how you then interact. And then it literally, it's, it it becomes muscle memory after that. And I'm like, you, you went into the accents, which is your favorite accent to do. And why? So like (laughs) literally my favorite accent as of late has been the Kardashian Calabasas. Totally. Because Bible, I don't get it. (laughs) You know, I'm it is the funniest accent I've ever heard because I'm like, I know people speak like this, but like, yeah, why? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I watch the show from time to time, but I, I've come. Oh, to, no, I've watched it religiously. I've come to enjoying the impersonators a whole lot more. There's than the one action. in particular. That Her girl. name is. Uh, uh, what's she's it? always shaking the salad. Yuri. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like, um, yeah. I was talking to Scott and he was I think my favorite one that she does has to be Kim. But I know the Courtney one is goated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, One, another (laughs) part that I like is when she does um, Chloe and she's like, oh, not. And then she does this with the the (laughs) the paper nails. (laughs) She's honestly amazing. And then there's these two um, ones from Australia. I think they're brother and sister. And they, they just play a more dramatized version of them where the guy, he just pulls this weird face. and I might have seen it. Yeah, no, I, I love, love them. Uh, love them. And the Kardashians also love them and they show their love. Yeah, I think them. that was what was more surprising to me is actually yeah. seeing the Kardashians not only like them, but also, you know, include them in the yeah. PR drops. And I'm like, <laughs> they're making fun of you. Yeah. But it also just goes to show that there are some places where they really do have a sense of humor. Yeah. And they don't take themselves seriously. And yeah. they're actually like, you know what? This is gold. I'm yeah. sorry. I have to laugh at it. This is me. This is what I sound yeah. like. Mm-hmm. I do shake my salads like this every single time. Mm-hmm. As Chloe, yes, I've got the nails <laughs> because energy. Yeah. You know? Um, so I love that a lot of these um, reality TV stars and even actors mm-hmm. are embracing this content creation culture. Where, yeah, you're going to get impersonated, but you know it's not out of malice or anything. Yeah. Like, you're not being trolled. Mm. You're literally just being impersonated yeah. for content, and it's funny. Yes. It's genuinely funny, and that's mm. what I love about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, to some degree, those people idolize them as well, in a way. Oh, dead ass. Yeah. Dead ass. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, have the roles that you've played in the past been a good demonstration of your range as an actress? Now, before you answer, am I correct in... Did you play the younger Mum Ruby on Generations? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was you, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just remembered. <laughs> I just remembered. That was definitely me. Yeah. I was in my second year at after when I did that. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I think I was only on set for like two days. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, that was, that was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. I still have a video. Mm-hmm. not even a video a photo of yeah. me on screen when like that whole scene happened mm-hmm. oh wow that was funny um 
how dare you bring that to me back? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just had to. That was repressed. Yeah. <laughs> um, not really. I think mm. a lot of the characters that I've done have always been quite short term, also mm-hmm. because they've been schedule conflicts with, you know, being in production, you have to be there almost every day. Yeah. So trying to take on a role whilst also doing a lot of production work. EP, you can kind of, you know, cheat the system a little bit, but mm-hmm. production where you're like knee deep within the admin and the bottleneck management and all of that, you know, um, you you do need to mentally be in the right place for it. Yeah. Um, I think it's shown that I can act. Yeah. Do I think that it's shown my entire range? Absolutely not. Mm. Uh, there's still a lot more that I want people to see. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Back to the game. All right. Um, the highlight of my career thus far has been blank. Casting and acting in a Netflix show, as small as it was. I think the casting that I did for Kings of Joburg, as intense as that shoot was, mm-hmm. is definitely some of my proudest work. I think all the castings I did from... Casting the four Corsa Boys, the open auditions, Mm -hmm. and casting Kings of Joburg, and even casting um, some of the people that were on this later season of Unmarried. Yeah. Definitely some of my finest work. I'm so proud of the the amount of work that I've been able to do over the past year. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I think that's definitely one of my highlights. Mm. Absolutely. And then the greatest compliment I've received from a family member was blank. I am so proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. You're on the right path. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I got that from my dad. Um, I only found my true confidence when blank happened. When I stopped caring about what people think. And that might have been very recently. I think maybe a couple of years ago. Couldn't be more than three years ago. Mm-hmm. When I was actually able to find myself in the grander scheme of things. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of being a mom, outside of being, you know, the daughter of such and such, mm-hmm. and just being seddy, mm. uh, or less seddy rather, you know. Um, and that's still an ongoing process. Yeah. But, like, I think that, like, the moment I really just stopped caring, where I really just was like, you know what? Y'all are going to get what y'all are going to get. I don't mm-hmm. care anymore. Mm. Um that's when I started being a lot more free and mm-hmm. a lot more comfortable with myself. And mm-hmm. I think that then translated into my relationships, my friendships, even just even me as a mom, mm-hmm. um, starting to be a lot more kinder to myself and giving myself a lot more grace enabled me to be a much stronger person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now this industry is filled with ups and downs. Mm. So now let's talk specifically to people who are coming into the industry. Mm-hmm. Can an actor without representation compete on the on a similar level as someone who does? Not really. Mm. I think representation works so much in the sense that you will not know what jobs are out there yeah. unless you have it. Mm. Um, is it easy for an actor to get into this industry without studying? Yes. Is it easy for them to get into this industry without representation? No. Mm. Um it's 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 a very tricky entry it's not as easy as everyone thinks Mm -hmm. and i'm saying that as me Mm. with the family and the connections i have it's still not easy getting in this industry nor is it easy staying in it yes um and there's still so much work that needs to be done within the industry be it with paid royalties all of those things you know there's still so much growth that needs to happen Mm -hmm. um so it's not an industry for the weak and our industry, as much as, yes, it is kind of based on talent, it's also based on who you know and what relationships you've created in the spaces you've been in mm-hmm. that can also kind of guarantee you more work. Yeah. Um, if you're a great actor, but you're difficult to work with, it's hard for you to get jobs. It doesn't matter about your talent anymore. It, de- it, it depends on how you, well you work with people. It is a team effort. Mm-hmm. It's not just about you as an mm-hmm. actor. It's a team effort. No man is an island in this industry yeah. or in any production. Yeah. Um, so I think people tend to forget that. Mm. But in the same time, there's also a very, 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 very thin line of being able to express your worth 
without being difficult mm. as well. It's a very, very, very thin line. I think very few people have mastered it. Mm-hmm. Have you? No. Mm. Um, but also, I still, I know, I still have a lot of dues to pay. Yeah. So I, I'm, 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 I've removed myself from that conversation. As an actress. Though. As an actress. Yeah. No production. Ah, please. No, there I go. Look, I've been doing this for a minute. Mm-hmm. You've seen my credentials. I've got this, this, this. Mm-hmm. What's up? Mm. As an actor, no, I still have a lot of dues to pay of which i'm very happy to pay them yeah um but also just making sure that i'm not taken advantage of and that's a big lesson that my family taught me as well yeah is in making sure that yeah you're going to get into this industry and there are going to be people that are going to want to take advantage of you especially because you have something to prove yeah so that that was a lesson i learned very very early on Mm. uh and also kind of applying that even in the behind the scenes stuff that i've done and what's the common misconception that young actors have about this industry? That it's easy. And that... And it's not. And that you'll be famous instantly. Mm. No, that's not it. And that it pays. Um, it can, mm-hmm. but again, we are very much out of sight, out of mind. If you're not on TV for a while, people are going to forget you. Yeah. And there's more to than just being an actor or an actress. Mm-hmm. You also have to kind of establish a brand that's going to make you money while still being able to show off your craft. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you can't be an actor without being in the public eye. Yeah. You need both to make it work. Mm-hmm. Um, you can control what people see. Mm-hmm. You can control how much they see of you. But somewhere along the line, you're going to also have to, you know, sort of make that sacrifice. Like, okay, I have to go to a few events. I have to do this. I have to still network. Yeah, It's all about networking at the end of the day. Mm-hmm behind and in front of the camera. Um, do you think that when an actor comes in to do the work, but also want the fame, do you think that's a bad thing? Or do you think the fame should just be something that comes along with doing the work? The fame should be something that comes along with doing the work. I think if you're getting into this industry purely for the fame, it's very easy to then get lost in the source and you're not going to have any kind of longevity mm. um, in this industry. Yeah. That's why I think my biggest advice will always be make sure if you're going to get into this industry, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and make sure you're doing it because you love it. Mm. Because apart from it being difficult to enter, it's even more difficult to stay. To, stay, mm. to be relevant. Um, now, I want to say TV in South Africa is mm. huge, right? But why do you think film is not as consistent rather as what TV is? Let's look at the socio-economic climate of our country. First things first. Um, TV is a lot more accessible than a cinema. Mm. And with a cinema, it's an experience. And because it's an experience, it requires a lot more money. Mm. Money we do not have. I think, and even those that do have money, we still haven't gotten to a point where our production value can be of similar quality, if not higher than our international counterparts yeah. you know so which is why tv is a lot bigger than than film because tv is more accessible yeah. it's easy to sit in front of a tv and tune into the program that's playing on eight o'clock on scbc one mm-hmm. versus going out to a cinema which requires transport petrol um the ticket popcorn the mm-hmm. and then transport back mm. That is a whole experience, but it's also so much more expensive than watching something Friday Action Night. Yeah, you know that's that's the biggest thing. Mm. Um, so it's not as accessible as I guess it used to be. Yeah, and with the cost of living rising, no one has time or money for the movies, mm. and that's a problem. But that's also why a lot of the movies that are being done in SA now are also being put on streaming services. So that they can be watched and they yeah. can get those numbers or at least get some kind of return on the investment. Yeah. Whereas if you were to put it in a cinema, and also we haven't really mastered marketing films. True. We only start marketing them maybe a, a, a week before, before they they're come, supposed to come no. out. And no, like you need to keep it in people's heads yeah. and do that marketing early and not be so secretive about what people are in up until that point. Like mm. if I'm going to be in a movie... I want you to know I'm in the movie even while I'm shooting. Yeah. Um, or even before I'm shooting. I mean, I'll take Marvel as a as a as a as very an, good example. Mm-hmm. Um 
Chadwick Boseman was announced as Black Panther in 2016. His movie came out 2018. That's two years before the movie came out. Mm -hmm. And already we're like, okay, cool. We're excited for this. We have no idea what the story is about. We just know he's going to be that superhero. Or even when you look at some of these like film and television um, articles, like, you know, the Hollywood Reporter, Mm. all those things where you see so-and-so and and -and so-and-so have been cast in a Netflix series, yada, yada, fish paste. Mm. Where you can kind of go, okay, just from the cast, I can kind of see where... Or what you you already gain an interest like okay what are they shooting what yeah. is the story about you know over the last few weeks I've um Lady Gaga and yeah shoot uh, and as the, Harley Quinn yeah whoa uh, while they're shooting I'm just like yeah yes I'm excited absolutely yeah because that garners more attention and then people are going to be like I want to see her as Harley Quinn what is she going to do mm. you know mm-hmm. you're re- it's already piqued your interest yeah. and it's already made you invested mm. so that by the time it comes out you're already have it in your mind that I will have this experience of watching the second Joker movie in the cinema. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. It's giving you time to prepare mentally, but also financially. Yeah. Yeah. Side question. What do you think about her, her being casted as Harley Quinn? It's a perfect choice. Yeah. It's an absolutely perfect choice, especially with the, um, the look and feel of that specific Joker movie with mm-hmm. Joaquin as the Joker, mm-hmm. absolute perfection. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. I, I like it too. A friend of mine is like, no, she just got it because she's Lady Gaga. I'm like, no, she's really Have you herself. seen Lady Gaga act? act. That is Please. my thing. Please. Yeah. She went to an art school. People mm-hmm. forget that. Like a, a lot of the time. Yes. Yeah. She established herself as a musician, but now she's giving time to show you that I am an actress. Yes. And yeah. she's brilliant at it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't deny the power that she has. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Back to the game. Mm-hmm. Um, this one was a little bit spicy. My current celebrity crush is blank. Christopher Jamal Evans. Ooh. It'll always be Christopher Jamal Evans. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, you know, if I was to do the swirl. Um, I am at my most happiest when I'm doing blank. When I'm performing. And that could be acting, that could be singing. I'm not singing today. Listen, I am not singing today. I'm just saying, do you hear my voice? I have my radio voice on. Mm. But you can dance as well. I could. Could? I could. I used to dance. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I was in that. um, I watch your TikToks. I've done one dancing challenge and Mm -hmm. that's with Ali. She's the dancer of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I used to do hip hop dancing Mm -hmm. a long time ago, back when Masters of Rhythm were a thing. I was in a crew and everything. Oh my god! We all the dark times, guys. <laughs> Masters of Rhythm. <laughs> Masters of Rhythm was a dance competition where people would do dance battles, crew against crew. Okay. It was a huge thing. Was and like, it televised? Uh, I think towards the end, yeah, like maybe the last oh. two years of it. Okay. Um, so I would watch. I'd never participate in mm. Masters, but I'd be there. Like 2007, 2008, th- those were my things, but. In 2008, I had a very bad knee injury. So I tore the tendon here behind my knee. Mm-hmm. And that's when I stopped dancing. So, I mean, I can, I can, I can bust the move here and there, you know, mm-hmm. but like, no, not. You're not a dancer. You wouldn't. I no, <laughs> no, 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 no. We would need rehearsals for that. So I can coordinate, but it would need rehearsal for me to be a dancer. Curiosity. Would you ever star in a musical? Yeah. Because that was actually my first, in, that was my introduction to performance. We did Lion King, but it was also, and then um, after that, I did Cats in grade six. And I, I played Grizabella in Cats. So mm. a lot of my foundational training um, in stage as well, well, a lot of them were musicals. Mm. So absolutely, I'd do a musical for sure. My definition of happiness is blank. Is being at peace with myself, my decisions, and my environment. Yeah. Last one. Blank is my strongest personality trait. <laughs> oh, man. Strongest personality trait. Mm. A very easygoing. I think that's my strongest personality trait. I th- well, I wouldn't say strongest, but that's the first thing that people will see about me. But mm. strongest personality trait. My observance. Okay. Definitely my observance. Mm-hmm. I think it's been able to get me out of a lot of sticky situations. Mm-hmm. Um, reading the room is important. I think I've said this in every interview. Mm. Reading 
the room is important because then you know if you need to be in that room or not. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely my strongest personality trait. As an outsider, and I'll speak to when we met, um, your confidence is very strong. Thanks. Yeah. I, I think it just comes out because it's not really me. It's it's just me being myself. Yeah. I wouldn't call it a confidence thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm still learning to be fully confident, but mm-hmm. I'm glad that that's what's portrayed. Mm-hmm. But it's not something that I actively put out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're approaching the end. Mercedes legacy. Um, which actor would you love to work with and why? This is either South African or internationally. Or one of each, actually. First and foremost, I'd love to work with my mom. I want to see something. Yeah. I definitely want to see something. My mom and my dad, mm. uh, my biological dad. Mm-hmm. I worked with my stepdad before. Mm-hmm. Um, if people remember this, then that'll be funny. But if y'all go to Showmax and you go to Rockfall 3... When I was pregnant, there's a scene where I think JB is looking for Deliza. Um, Because remember now, Deliza's busy shooting everyone. And then he goes into, and then JB goes into this Nigerian place. And there's this crackhead chick that's busy offering him services. And he's like, hey, I'm not looking for you. And then he talks to this other Nigerian guy. Mm -hmm. That was me in the messed up ratchet wig and everything. I'm literally going to go watch this when I get home. (laughs) I'm literally going to go watch this when I get home. There's nothing more awkward than going to your dad and offering him your services. Mm. And we had to do that take so many times. And each time I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm sure afterwards you guys just laughed it off. No, we had to because mm-hmm. it was just awkward. I'm like, why would you put me in this role? Yeah. It was so awkward. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was, that, was, that was fun. So that was the one time we acted together. Like it was a very small scene, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. Mm. I love to act with my mom. Mm. Would you want to play her on-screen daughter or not? Yes and no. I could I could play her on-screen daughter, absolutely, but I'd also want to see outside Something of that. Mm. Yeah, I'd love to see outside of that. Okay. Um, and also, I'd love to work with my dad. Uh, my older sister worked with my dad, oh, our dad, way, 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 way long time ago. Uh, Tetam Sawa it was a, a kid's show. Okay. Um, and she was, I think, 16 mm-hmm. when she did the show. And, you know, she worked with him as a director, but also as an actor. So I'd love to get the opportunity to work with my family. Mm-hmm. Um, internationally, oh man, the list is endless. The list is so endless. I'd love to be on an Issa Rae production. I'd love to work with Issa. I'd love to work with, you know, just the main legends. I I would even like to do a Tyler Perry film, you know. I can bring the pain. (laughs) I always say this. People ask me, what's your, like, what would be the role for you? And I, they, they laugh, but I say, either to play his son in one of his films yeah or to play a younger version of him in his biopic because that would work i see it i see it that would work so only because he inspired me so much it, like my foundation my first time performing was in grade eight mm. 2013 new to high school I'm like oh so scared and we had to because part of our orientation was to put on a play i'm sorry did you say grade eight it was 2013 yeah <laughs> I'm getting old, guys. What? I was in my third year of varsity in 2013. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) And so this was a thing for our parents. So we had to do it for the seniors at school and then for our parents. Yeah. And so for... No one for our parents, no one wanted to do it from the acting group. And we're just like 12 of us. Mm. And then they were like, oh, come up with something. And then um, in that... In that era of my life, I was watching his films every single day. Mm. So then I wrote like an amalgamation of all his things. And then I directed everyone. And then I played Medea on, this was before puberty um, struck. So I could really go high yeah, like yeah, that yeah, with yeah, my yeah, American. Yeah. With, and after that, um, then I got, that's actually what confirmed this industry for me. Mm. I got a standing ovation after that. And I was like, this is it. Okay. So doing that would be a thank you to him it would be an ode yeah. absolutely and seeing him in 2018 first year of varsity um at global citizen mm. amazing of course we got to see her as well no for sure but yeah. i mean yeah we know where we're trying to go yeah no but yeah i'd love to act in a tyler perry film yeah i can bring the pain <laughs> i can bring that range yeah give it to me yeah um but yeah there's so many people i'd love to work with mm-hmm. i'd even want to be in a marvel film Absolutely. Give me a year or two to get this snatched body in shape. 
Yeah. Put me there on a Black Panther day. I see you. I would love, I'd love to do that. I Absolutely. That. Especially in a Black Panther film. I'd love to do that. Yeah. And it wouldn't matter if I'm playing a Wakandan or an American. I'd mm-hmm. bring it. Mm. 100%. I'd love to do that. I could definitely see you as like a FBI type of agent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and there's one person I would love to work with more than anything on this planet. Um, Shannon Ezra. She plays Sandra Stein. Um, yes. in a lot of the productions that we did, yes. including the River Gomorrah. Yes, Shannon, if you're watching this, ma'am, we need to create the series for Sandra Stein, and ma'am, I will be your protege, one hundred percent. I am. We have to do it, please. If you're watching this, call me. You've got my number. <laughs> we'll do it. I would love for that to happen. I would love to work with her more than anyone in this world, Shannon. Shannon? If you're oh. watching this, we'd love to have you on the couch. But the fact that you said that, um, The River Season 2. Yes. With the Trial of Lindiwe. Yes. When it was her and Masasa. Yes. Oh, I, guys. I literally started writing it down, the series. Yeah. Literally. And then the third person was, um, oh my gosh, I need to remember her name. I need Linda Sokulu. Yes. The three of them. A legal drama series in South Africa starring the three of them would be amazing. It would be phenomenal. You know I love you. It would be phenomenal. I could imagine Sandra Stein's character being very much like a, almost a mix of Annalise Annalise and and Olivia Olivia Pope. Yes. Yes. I (gasps) guess she's the fixer, but she's also like that how to get away with murder type of person. Uh And I see myself as being that one that has a lot to learn, but then ends up in a very dark space and then like kind of then that will make the character would you, a lot stronger. Would you want to be um, a, ca- a new candidate attorney at her firm? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So it's almost like it's almost like you have how to get away with murder. The fixer or we the call scan- it the fixer. It's scandal, scandal. But you know, yeah. South Africans, we, we took the name yeah. for, uh, <laughs> for a soap. <laughs> um, and what's the other one? Suits. Yes. I'd, w- I'd want the wittiness of mm. suits, mm-hmm. the grittiness of how to get away with murder, mm-hmm. and the scandal mm. of scandal. Yes. In one series. Guys. That would be a Fireworks. Literally. Fireworks. We haven't had a law series in the longest of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the last time, what was it? Diamond City? Mm-hmm. But like actually do yeah. like proper based on law and on their mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. instead of just, you know, the main story being about someone else yeah. but like actually mm-hmm. saying what does Sandra what does Sandra Stein eat for lunch yes is does she have is she in a relationship legacy tried to explore that did they yeah. I didn't see that a few episodes okay a few episodes they really tried to explore that but I uh, yeah but yeah anyway yeah continue so like you know get into like her, her nitty-gritty how obviously she ended up being a lawyer I remember how Sandra was created um she was a character for the queen First and foremost, yeah. right? Yeah. And in the Queen season one and two, we mm-hmm. always spoke about Stein and Associates. And Stein was actually an old Jewish kind of white man. Mm-hmm. We never saw him, but we always heard of him. Mm-hmm. And then season two, that's when she came in, mm-hmm. where she is the daughter of that guy. Mm-hmm. And she decided to take over because he's now retired. Mm-hmm. And that's how we then got mm-hmm. introduced to Sandra Stein. Mm-hmm. But then, obviously, when the crossovers between the Queen and the River happened, Mm -hmm. and they became the same universe, then Sandra would go to the River. Then the same thing happened on Gomorrah. Then then it happened on Legacy. So she's the only character that has crossed over three or more productions at the same time. Time. That is unheard of in this industry. I think we really did something when that happened, and I'm so happy for it. But I really I want to get to know her now. I want to see how she works. Um, I want to see what's her stress. What yeah. is her actual stress? What's mm-hmm. her ethics? Mm. What is her moral code? Yeah. What does she tell everyone else in the office to do? Is it really as simple as, look, we got a case, they paid us money, or mm-hmm. do you actually, are you remorseful about some things? Mm. What's your relationship with your family like? Maybe mm. your dad has passed away. What's the relationship with your mom? Do you, you have siblings? You know, do you have a child? What's going on? We want to know. Yeah. We want to know. Does she have a husband or not? Yes. Yeah. You know, like... Mm-hmm. What, what what makes her tick? Who yeah. is she as a person? I'd love to explore that, but I would love for that to be a proper 
law series. Yeah. Oh my God, it would kill. A series, not a telenovela. No, a series. A series. It has to be a 13 parter. Mm-hmm. And I think it should end at season four. As most shows should, because they lose the plot after that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you forget what the core story is about, mm-hmm. surely after season three. Mm-hmm. Season four is where you can literally then maybe wrap, wrap up all of the storylines, but don't go beyond yeah. that. Don't disappoint the fans. Yes. You know, this really needs to happen. When you said Stain and Associate, literally I got goosebumps because when I was writing it back in Varsity, yeah. that's what the firm was called. Wow, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> from all the different hats that you wear, yeah, which of those has been the most challenging and why? Casting director. Yeah. There's a lot more responsibility in that role and mm-hmm. be and taking on that responsibility like yo, I really need to make sure I get the best person for the job. Mm -hmm. And especially now because we're in an industry where numbers mean more than everything else, which is so weird for me. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I don't subscribe to that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, making sure that we have the right person for the job, Mm -hmm. that they're able to deliver, Mm -hmm. especially if the storyline gets really, really challenging, Mm -hmm. physically and mentally, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, And being a casting director for a telenovela is no easy feat Mm -hmm. as well. So that, that I think was one of the hardest things for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, are there any career choices that you regret? I regret not having sung earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I regret not having nurtured the singing part of me yeah. more than anything. I always knew that I wanted to act, but I also loved singing. Mm-hmm. And I think what I regret, not that I can't change it now, I can mm-hmm. and I'd love to, but I think I regret not having nurtured that part of me at the same time as nurturing the actor in me. So are you actively pursuing that right now or not yet? Not yet. Mm. Not yet, but I'd love to, absolutely. Curiosity. Yeah. What would your music sound like? Alternative R&B. Yeah. So it would be uh, alternative R&B slash soul. So it would be very much like an Ari Lennox, uh, her, mm. mixed with a bit of Victoria Monet, Lucky yes. Day. I'm that type of person. Mm. I'm I'm a soulful heifer. Yeah. So I would want to be there, and and I, I I love singing about love, and even if love is not loving me back, like mm. love, heartbreak, anything that has emotion, anything that you can feel, strong emotion. Yeah, mm. I want people to feel something. Mm. I think that's my biggest thing with whatever I do in performance is I want you to feel something, yeah. whether or not I'm acting whether or not I'm singing, mm. you're going to feel something when yeah. you see me or when you hear me. Yeah. I have to trigger an emotion out of you. I want to be a part of your core memory, be it in a scene or in a track. That's what I want. That's what, that's my main goal in this life. Let's take that further. Last question. Mm. What would you want the central theme of the story of your life to be? In whatever way you've encountered me, you have felt something. And that feeling will stay with you for the rest of your life. Having encountered me, I will be a core memory. Mm. I will be unforgettable. That is my biggest thing, to be unforgettable. Mm. I'd like for that to be good. Sometimes it may be bad, but I'm Mm. also very, I I also take a lot of accountability for my things. But one way or another, when you hear the name Sedi, you'll have a memory of me. Yeah. 100%. One hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that's episode two. <laughs> um, I really, really, really. I and I knew this was going to happen when we met last year because I wasn't expecting to see you on set last year, but when I saw you, I was like, yeah. Because, Why weren't you expecting to see me? No, I just thought maybe you wouldn't be there because that day, um, it wasn't really particularly busy on set. Yeah. So I, I thought, okay, maybe she's doing. She's cast. I, honestly, I assumed KOJ. Mm, yeah. No, we'd finished by then. Oh, okay. KOJ finished in July. Yeah. So I'd come back to the Queen full time to wrap it up. I wasn't expecting to see you. Definitely wasn't expecting to see your mom. I had a full on fangirl moment. I saw that and I was embarrassed for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, why? No, I think it's just always very funny to see someone fangirl because to me, it's mom. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't blame you for having that, but no. just also seeing how you were, I'm just like. Oh, just take a breath, man. No, <laughs> let me explain, right? So where I was seated, I didn't know be- that that's where she usually sits. Yes. When they're doing, when they're running the lines. Mm. So she didn't come in with the attitude of like, you're in my seat. I don't even know who you are. Literally, Andres was like, oh, this is Connie Ferguson. And in my mind, I'm like, 
Yeah, I know who this is, you know? And then she was like, hello, how are you? And then I extended my hand to shake him. She was like, no, give me a hug. I was like, wow. And to extend that, um, yeah, she, your mom grew up in Botswana, but she's from Kimberley. Yes. As well. Yes. And I'm from Kimberley. So yeah. it's just like a, wow. And then she's, and when she found out that I'm from Kimberley, she was like, hi, homie. And I was like, hello. <laughs> and then she's, and then she said to me, oh, do you know um, Nya, 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 Nya Street? That's where she Ooh. grew up. I was like, I might know where it is, but the name, no. And I actually do know. So, mom, if you're watching, I do know where it is. I've got family in that street. So, just the proximity. Yeah. Someone from Kimberley. I'm someone from Kimberley. Yeah. It's just like, wow. And it's Karabo, Morocco, you know, like, type of thing. So, why, 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 why? Why Karabo? That's how I was introduced to your mom. I know. But it's 2023. Stop it. It's my childhood, though. Stop it. Every single day. You're in this industry. You know better. <laughs> you right. know better. Come on. No. No, I, no, no. no. I, I, I play around with that. I know. It's, yeah. it's, 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 she'll never get rid of that name. We know. Yeah. We know. Yeah. But I will have to side eye you and I, from time to time. But Nothing I, heavy. I saw now the other day that she's going back. For a few episodes. Yeah. Literally a few episodes, so... I don't know when that's going to start, but when this comes out, it might have happened. Yes. Yes, yes it will have. Yeah. It definitely will have. So, they've already shot those episodes, mm. which, if I'm not mistaken, they're about three and a half months in advance. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, around about that time. Oh, oh, yeah. But yeah, anyway. If you guys enjoyed watching episode two, please do like, uh, leave a comment if you'd like to. If you haven't, please subscribe. If you're listening to the podcast, please come back when we have the next episode. Let's say thank you so much. Thank you for um, having me. I hope we can do this again. Oh, no, definitely. This is fun. This yeah. is awesome. I love this. Okay, cool. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Seri. I just had my interview with Kopano from Creative Connect. Make sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to tap that bell so that you can get notifications of more episodes.